Welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Today I feel you're going to see me struggling. In the last session we successfully produced a rather nice light that my wife has commandeered. During the manufacture of that light I struggled quite a lot. It wouldn't cut through 4mm acrylic. I had to do multiple cuts over the same pattern to get it to drop out. Now that's good news that you can, if you don't touch the job at all, you can run the program again and produce a deeper cut. Today's session is all about trying to investigate why it's not cutting properly. Now my immediate thoughts were that it was something to do with the cooling system on the laser and that my fairly small tank of cooling water was overheating. Well, I fixed that problem with a cooling system and the temperature only went up after about an hour or so of use by maybe one or two degrees C and it was still sitting at about 25 or 26 degrees C when I finished the test. So I think we've ruled out cooling water or keeping the laser cool as a potential cause of this problem. So now what I'm trying to find out is just how and why and when and where the laser loses power. So what we're going to do is produce a little test program um, to try and evaluate exactly what's going on. These two pieces here are going to be cut out of acrylic and they are two test pieces. Um, how they will be used will become obvious when we get to the machine but basically I'm going to cut those out of probably five millimeter white acrylic. Delete this one for the moment and we'll just move this one. We'll now just save that and output it as an RD file and we'll import our DXF file again. We'll make it full size and this time we'll delete these two items and leave ourselves with this. We'll move that to the top corner and if we look at that you'll find that it's a snake. <clears throat> it starts at the top left hand corner there. It travels 200 millimeters across the page, then two millimeters down and 200 millimeters back and it does that and snakes backwards and forwards. So there's a line there that is eight meters long, 8,000 millimeters. Sounds like a strange test but all become clear as we start up on the machine. So again we would save this as a file and output it to a U file. Um, now if you take a look at the setup that I've got here I'm using a piece of 5mm white acrylic and I've set it down onto a piece of corrugated cardboard. Now we know from previous work that corrugated cardboard is difficult to cut so I'm using this as a, a bed at the moment like the honeycomb. I think we're running this very slowly at 5mm a second and because the laser has not been used at all um, it's cool and uh, we're probably going to get a very good cut to make these test pieces. Okay, there's our two test pieces and hopefully they should both fall out. The first one did, and would you believe it, after the second one, part way through the second one, it has actually stopped cutting properly. So there's a good example of the problem that we're trying to identify. Is it time related? And we can see what I mean here. Look, there's the excess power and all of a sudden it got to this part and it's dropped off. We'll place, replace that with a piece of acrylic. We now need to reset the laser height. Now because this is running at five millimeters a second, um, not only have we got distance here, we've also got some time that we can look at as well. So I'm using that dot as a measure of the excess power. Now there was a hole in the middle of that dot, but now there's not a hole in the middle of the dot. And the return temperature from the water passing through the laser has now gone up to 23.3. Well that's interesting, we've got our dot back in the middle of the, uh, we've got our little clear dot back in the middle there. Now 
uh, there's not a, not a hint of any excess energy there at the moment. Now we've got a little bit of marking on the surface again now. We've got some power coming back because it's just bubbling away on the surface there. It's not actually vaporising, it's sort of almost like boiling away, producing little bubbles on the surface. And I would say, if anything, our power is increasing a little bit now because that mark is getting a bit bigger. So I'm going to let this test continue because it's designed to run for about 8 metres. And at the end of 8 metres, I should be able to estimate a time and a power variation and generate a little graph to show this. Wow, the power is really coming back now. I can clearly see the hole in the middle of the beam. So what I'm really trying to find out is what's the cause of the power variation? I thought it might have been the mirrors heating up, but it obviously can't be the mirrors heating up. I thought it might be instability of temperature on the laser caused by the minimal amount of water that I've got in my reservoir. But now I've got my water temperature under control. Wow, look at that, the power is really going up now. Um, just about have got the merest amount of distortion on the surface there, but it's not something you can see on the video. How lucky are we going to be? Are we going to get this power back? I think the answer is no this time. There we go. You can just see the burning on the surface there. When I put some lights behind it for you. But it's not the white excess power footprint. It's just the merest amount of distortion of the surface. At the end of that test we've gone up to 26.1. We started the test at 23.9. Yeah, we've only gone up for two degrees. So I don't think the loss of power can be anything to do with the water temperature. It's nothing to do with the mirrors or the focal point of the lens. Yeah. So it can only be something to do with the output power of the laser which is controlled by the electronics. So I don't think there's any doubt there when we take a look at that. I will measure this up and put this on a graph, but you can clearly see as we go along there how the power has significantly decreased and changed. I've completed three patterns of my power loss test and an interesting observation has come out of it. If you look at the first pattern, which was 5 millimetres a second, first of all, this, this black line here represents the end of the pattern. And in every instance, you'll notice that the last bit of the pattern has disappeared. There's no excess energy burning away the surface of this acrylic. And in every instance, the area where the power gets lost, which is obviously here, and here, and here. It's starting to come back in here. There is a very definite banded pattern on there, regardless of the speed that I'm cutting it at. If it was distance related, i.e. the amount of time that the laser was on, it would be related to time as well, because this one is three times faster than that one. And if it was distance related, you'd expect this band of failure to have occurred probably somewhere right over here, and you wouldn't have a band of failure in the same place. So. This is leading me to believe that we've actually got some sort of problem with the power disappearing on the y-axis mirror at these points. Now, I don't know, I'm going to have to go and do a lot more investigation of it, but that appears to be the, um, the conclusion that I'm coming to. We will plot um, these data, this data out against y-axis distance as well, so that we can check the correlation between these but I think when we look at this when we correlate the depth of cut we shall find that the depth of cut is very much correlated to the 
y-axis distance that we're cutting. So here are the results and you know as you would expect the slow speed cuts the deepest starts off at over five millimeters but quickly drops off. Um, you can examine these results for yourself to see just what degree of variation we get over time but over about 28 minutes five millimeters a second started off at about five and a half millimeter cut depth and finished up at just over one well that's a significant drop in power the test took place over approximately 80 millimeters of the y-axis although we didn't start the test in exactly the same position they were probably within two or three millimeters of the same position and these are the results that we finished up with now it seems as though there's a very strong correlation between the position of the power loss and the position along the y-axis. So I think the obvious next step is to take our pattern and turn it through 90 degrees so that we get our traverse along the y-axis and if we truly are getting a power loss because of some feature in the y-axis then we should see a rippling effect up and down the y-axis as we carry out the test. I seriously thought that as the machine came forward I was picking up some sort of problem in the y-axis because of the extreme correlation that I was getting from my graph. If I turn the test around through 90 degrees I should be able to see a, an increase and a decrease and an increase and a decrease as I run the test up and down this way which would have indicated some problem with the mirrors or something going out of alignment as I go up and down. But I didn't. I got the same sort of stripey result where the power came in then it disappeared and then it came back again. So having established that it's not a problem with the y-axis and it's not even a problem with the x-axis, we must turn our focus back to the laser itself. So what we're going to do is to run a test on the laser, um, some sort of quantitative assessment of how the power of the laser is changing over time, if it is. And if not, we can carry out the same tests between the mirrors over here and see which of the mirrors, if any, is giving us the problem. <clears throat> well, here we are at the, uh, at the back of the machine and you're looking at the output directly from the laser into the first mirror. When the laser runs, you'll see there's a, there's a pink glow in here um, to show you that the laser is actually running. I've got here a piece of 8mm acrylic. Now, as we already know, acrylic vaporizes rather than burns. So what my intention is, is to stick this right in front of the laser beam before it goes into the first mirror. So the, the amount that's vaporized away from the surface here will give me an indication of the power of the laser. And what I should do is I should hold this in front of here for five seconds. Here we go. Right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. When the laser was cold, we've got a nice deep hole in there, in the middle. So we've got like a well, a little flat, and then the center is even deeper. Now a few minutes later it was still quite deep but the power to the centre of the beam had disappeared so instead of having a hole I've now got a little pyramid that stands up in the middle here on number two. So several things indicate that we're losing power there and that the, uh, the output from the laser has changed. Then we've got number three where the power has dropped off dramatically as you can see. We've got virtually no depth at all. Number four went back to actually deeper than number two. Still got a little pip in the middle. And then finally number five was very much like number three. So the power had dropped off just before the end of the test quite dramatically. You can see that five and one are nothing like each other. That's the difference in power between the beginning and end of the test. So there's my problem. It's nothing to do with the mirrors or the beam alignment or the focus. It's all to do with the output from the laser itself. So I'm now going to have to go and talk to the manufacturer and see what it is that I can do to improve this situation.